And a good spiritual morning to you once again. I'm Father Cosmas. Thanks for joining me today for a quick chat and, of course, our morning cup of coffee. And so today, of course, a big feast day in the life of our church. We remember the presentation of our Lord in the temple every year on February 2nd. Why February 2nd? Well, because that's 40 days after December 25th. So on the 40th day, as was the law and the custom of the Old Covenant, uh, babies on the 40th day were brought to the temple with an offering by their parents uh, for a blessing. And so two things that I wanted to mention about uh, Ipapandi, as we say, at the presentation of our Lord in the temple. Two things to think about uh, critically for us as Orthodox Christians. One, it reminds us of really who Christ is. Uh, and two, it reminds us of the blessing of children. And I say who Christ is because um, Ipapandi shows us this presentation feast of our Lord in the temple reminds us that Christ is a lawgiver. He follows the old covenant tradition. He's not there to sort of just abolish the law. He's there to fulfill the law. And far too often, we live in an age of activists and social justice and political reform and social reform. And there's people that like to sort of say, well, Christ was, was really just a political and social reformer. He was a social justice warrior. Well, he, he went into the temple and turned over the tables. He was, he was protesting against you know, society and against the authorities. Um, no, not really. He was sort of worrying about the kingdom of heaven. He didn't come here to become a social reformer. In fact, they ask him, should we pay taxes? What does he say? Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. He turns over the tables in the temple to show that worship is supposed to be done in spirit and truth. It's not supposed to be an exchange of goods and resources, right? But really, he's not here to worry about what's happening on earth in terms of society and politics and in that respect. He's here to do one basic thing. He becomes incarnate to save the world through the resurrection. He's interested in establishing the church and giving us a, a means to be sanctified so that we receive his grace and can go to heaven, can go to paradise and be with God forever. That's his main concern. He's a lawgiver. He fulfills the law. And secondly, children are a huge blessing. That's the other thing we're hearing a lot in society. Oh, I can't believe you're having kids. What about global warming? What about there's no energy, there's no resources, and it's such an irresponsible thing for people to be having children nowadays. Um, you know, you shouldn't have more than one, and even that, depending on where you live, you shouldn't even do that. Well, again, not so much. Children are a blessing, and we have as many children as God blesses us with, and there's more than enough resources for God to provide and for us to provide for those children. Uh, and in fact, we have negative population growth rates in many countries right now. And so we, this idea that, oh, there are so many people living in the world that the world can't sustain us. Um, there's lots of room. There's lots of resources. There's still lots uh, of ability for us to be able to have children and see children as a blessing from God and know that if God provides us with that gift, and it's his will, we should be open to it, and we should thank God for it, the same way that, you know, that uh, the Virgin Mary and her betrothed, St. Joseph, make the offering of the two turtle doves in the temple today to sort of th give thanks uh, for the blessing of, of a new child, and that's something that we should always do. Children are always a blessing. They're never a burden on society, and we should always look at them that way as an opportunity to increase and to share God's love uh, as much as we possibly can each and every day. Amen.